Good morning, Northgate. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Jim Tizik. And this morning I want to read to you from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you this day that you would speak to us about going and making disciples. Amen. Do you ever have a problem with going? Like getting going in the morning or getting doing some task? Way back in 2006, we started building a house. And part of the plans included building a deck. But at the time, we thought we could save some money and not do the deck. Someday, we would get going on that deck. Well, the last few years, we've been talking more about getting going on that deck. But there's so many things, decisions to be made, like, Quite where should it be situated the deck? How long should it be? How wide should it be? Where should the steps be? What kind of material should we use? So we talk to people, and we have people look at a backyard, and we went and saw materials. And finally, I think it was just in July, we finally finally chose the material at the building supply. And then I asked our friend Earl Coleman, uh, if he might help in building the deck. And he graciously agreed. I think I actually asked him about a year ago. And so finally, I'm not sure it's in July, I got him some plans. I know actually he came up, I gave him some ideas and he did some initial plans. And then I came up with some final plans. And I finally got into the building inspector and I went to the building supply and ordered materials. And I think it's about four weeks we finally got going on that deck. Going is sometimes hard. And in the passage I read, Jesus tells his disciples to get going and making disciples. But just like the deck with us going, engaging people with the good news of Jesus. It's not always easy. So this morning I want to spend time just talking about going, engaging people with the gospel. I want to share why it's important. Some things that can create hindrances for us to go and some practical tips that have helped me. But before doing that, this just review what it means to be a disciple, since Jesus does tell us here to go and make disciples. And after all, that's what he's calling us to be as well. So the term in Jesus' day for what we use this term disciple is really a pupil of a teacher. Not like the pupils we have today in the sense that we go to school. This disciple, a disciple would be one who would follow the teacher, teacher around and learn from the teacher because they believed that what the teacher said was true. But they would not only follow the teacher around wherever they went, they would actually obey what the teacher required them, have asked of them. And in Matthew 28, Jesus points out two things that will mark those who are his disciples, baptism 
and obedience to his teaching. Baptism was a sign that they were entering into Jesus' new community, and that they were pledging submission to his kingship. And with that new allegiance, they would be taught to obey Jesus' teaching. To say it in another way, to be a disciple is casting your lot in with King Jesus. And from now on, you're going to follow his lead. Now back to the going. I may be wrong, but I don't think most of us find it easy to engage other people with the gospel of Jesus. Sometimes it helps to remember why Jesus calls us to go and engage. And the chief reason is the gospel message is so central to God's heart. After all, we remember that God sends one and only Son into this world that we might be reconciled back to Him. God wants to restore what was lost in the Garden of Eden. He wants to set us free from our brokenness and sin and to make us His children. And through Jesus' death and the resurrection, God has made it possible for this to happen. God wants all people, Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 2 and 4, to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth for what he has done for them. But if people don't know about what God's done for them, they don't know about this great gift that we can be reconciled to God, they cannot receive it. And in Romans, Paul writes, Romans 10, verse 14, how can they put their trust in him if they have not heard of him? And how can they hear of him unless someone tells them? For people to hear the good news of Jesus, someone has to share it with them. Now, sometimes we can think that's the job of people like Dan, and he does that. Or well, it's the job of the missionary overseas, or people who are evangelists. Now, there's a twofold problem with thinking that it's the job of someone else, who, like pastors and missionaries. First, Jesus said, every disciple is to be taught to obey all his commands. And one of his commands is go and make disciples. The job for going is for all of us, for you and I, no matter what our role in life may be. Added to that, the task is far too great to limit it to a few. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's roughly 7.8 billion people in our world, which I don't know how we, we I mean, it's just hard to grapple that, may, that big a number. But of that number, only about one third identify in some way as being Christian. So we have about 68% of people who don't, who we can say aren't following Jesus in the world, the majority. And of those people, they say 81% of those people who aren't following Jesus personally don't know a disciple. They don't know someone who's a Christian. In fact, they say there's some people almost 29% of the world, they don't even have access to hearing about the good news of Jesus. So if, if someone doesn't go, how will they hear? Now you may wonder about Canada, 
which I wonder about too. Now back in two years ago, in fact, the Pew Research Center conducted a survey among Canadians and they discovered that 55% of adults identify themselves as Christian, be that Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. Another 29% claim to be atheist, agnostic, or, or, or nothing. And at least 8% claim to be part, belong to one of the other world religions. However you look at this statistic, at least 45% of Canadian adults aren't all in Jesus. We need to go and make disciples because need is both great here in Canada and even greater in other parts of the world. But I admit that even knowing the great needs in the world around us, and even knowing that it's God's heart that we go, that that isn't always enough to motivate me to go out and share the gospel. I discovered in my own life there are some hindrances beyond even knowing knowledge. And one thing that hinders me from going and engaging people with the good news of Jesus is when I become very self-focused. When I'm self-focused, I'm thinking about me and my life, my problems. I'm thinking about how God can bless me and how others can help me. And that's in a time like that, I need to refocus and remember that although I'm a child of God and I'm a brother of King Jesus, I am here on this earth to follow them. I am here to do their will. It isn't about me. It's about God and pleasing him. Another thing I've discovered that hinders me from going and engaging people with the gospel is when I can just see people from a human point of view. I just see them as people like you, people like me. And I forget about the lostness, that they are without a savior and hope and that they live in, in darkness and brokenness. A third hindrance that keeps me at times from going and seeking to make disciples is when I begin to think it's all up to me. I gotta get everything right. Otherwise, if I don't, I could mess somebody's life up. I could keep them from coming to Christ even more. And the prospect for a person like me of not getting things right can paralyze me from doing anything. I've been reminded, though, over the past few months, that for a person to become a follower of Jesus, it's really God's work. In John 6, verse 44, we read, Jesus tells us, no one can come to me unless the Father draws him. It's God's job to draw people. It's our job to share the good news. Another thing I'm realizing is that sharing the gospel is a skill to be de developed. You know, some of us may do it naturally, but many of us, I believe, like myself, benefit from learning some tips and practicing them over and over. So in this last part today, 
I want to share some practical tips that have helped me recently to get going. Tip number one is to train yourself to be intentionally thinking about going when you're out there. You know, you know, I sometimes think it'd be nice if God could just zap me and make me conscious of my need to go and make disciples wherever I am. Instead, I discovered that I, it's something I need to cultivate. I need to train myself to think about people needing God when I go to work, when I go to the store, when I walk on the road, wherever I go, when I answer the phone. And two things that have helped me in that way is one is to be more to be more conscious of people around me in need is to have people around me in my life who can challenge me in that way. And to watch, listen, or read about people who are already going. So train yourself. Take time before you take off somewhere. And just ask the Lord, make me conscious of the people around me today, the people I see and the people I meet. Tip number two, take time to talk to people. Now, some of you do this very naturally, but if you're an introvert like me, it can be a bit more difficult. It's, but I can tell you, over time, you can do it, and you can learn to like to do it. It's, Instead of seeing how quick you can make a purchase, perhaps by paying at the pump or by doing the self-checkout, purposely go to cashiers and try to take time with them. I try to frequent the same gas stations over and over, same businesses, so that I can learn the cashier's names. I can get to know them. They can get to know me. I know this isn't really about necessarily, I know I'm not necessarily sharing the gospel right then and there with them, but just being friendly and getting to know people and them getting to know you can open doors to share the gospel down the road. Tip number three, Pray for people. If I know a person and they express a need, I may ask if I can pray for them. Sometimes I don't know the person, but I will still often ask them and say something like this. I like to pray for people. I wonder if you have a need that I could pray and ask God to help you with. As I mentioned, we've been building the deck, and because of that, we've had, I've seen, I've met at least three different delivery drivers with our building supplies. And two of those, I actually asked if I could pray, if they had a need to pray, I could pray about with them. One said no, but one said yes, and I proceeded right then and there to just chat with them. I not chat, I should say pray with them briefly. I know they have other things to do. Now you may ask, why pray? Well, one thing praying can be easier and going right into the gospel. But praying for people lets them know that I care about them and that God cares about them. And when they see God answer prayer, it may open them up to more of him. Asking them about prayer alerts them too that I'm a spiritual person. 
so that in the future, if something comes up, or they're going through a struggle, they may remember that weird guy, Jim, who I thought he was weird at the time, but, you know, maybe I can call upon him. Maybe you can help me. Maybe, and the opportunity may open them to share more about Jesus with them. Or they themselves may begin to talk to God. So tip number three, pray for people. Tip number four, look for opportunities to share stories. And here I'm thinking of stories from the gospel. One of the favorite stories that Catherine and I like to share with people is the story of Jesus asleep in the back of the ship, not the ship, boat, when the storm came up. And it's, I mean, it's a story that relates to so many people's lives who are going through troubles and storms. And sometimes I might just say, I have a, I have a story I'd be all right to share it with you. But it could be a story of how God's worked in your life. They may be sharing something with you, and you can say, that reminds me of a time when I was going through this big problem and how God came through. I asked him, and he provided. So tip number four, share stories. The big thing in going and engaging people with the gospel is to begin somewhere. And even as it is, the first step is just being more conscious of people out there. Maybe you won't share the gospel. Maybe you won't do anything, say anything to anyone. But you first, you're becoming more conscious of people out there in need of Jesus. Do something. Just as a child learns to walk by trying over and over, we do the same as we seek to engage in people. We probably won't get it right. Many times we may not get it right. You know, I, I don't get it right, I just, but I keep doing it. And I know that God is pleased. He's pleased that I'm trying. And he'll be pleased, too, if you try. If you do something, even if you don't get it right. And I think, too, of these last words of Matthew 28, when Jesus said, And surely I'm with you always, to the very end of the age. As we go, Jesus is with us always. Literally. The whole of every day, he is with us. So this week, go. Go into your neighborhood. Go into your place of work. Go into the place of commerce. Go into hospitals. Go into parks. Wherever people go, you go. Go with the intention of pointing them to Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you're with us. And we ask that you just give us nudges. Give us nudges to go. Even today, we ask for a nudge. And that you'd open our eyes to the people around us in need of you. And that as we just seek to be obedient to your command to go and make disciples that you just show us different ways that we can move the conversation towards you. Thank you. Thank you for this mission you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So have a good week.